Okay, this is the F4 Phantom that I purchased from Nitro Plants, and apparently it's made by a company called G and C Hobby. You can see I've purchased the 70 uh, millimeter uh, Blue Angels version of the F4 uh, Phantom. When you order something like this, and you get these instruction manuals, and your wife tells you that you just got another big toy, you need to read to her the statement that this is not a toy. All right, so. My plan was to um, install this uh, 70 millimeter ducted fan jet that I got out of my uh, Hobby Lobby jet that crashed after one flight. <coughs> so this jet appears to be compatible in, in respect of having a power system. So we'll pull it up here and then here's the compartment. This is very similar to the Hobby Lobby version of the F5, which is the one that went down in a blaze of glory. Okay, so here's the engine compartment. It's got this one, this engine has got this, these uh, little extrusions on the side here. Okay, so there uh, you have it. It's an actual drop-in fit, including the um, beveled areas inside of the frame that exactly fit this other uh, ducted fan unit. It was manufactured I think by Starmax and this is uh, G and C hobby so they're probably all made in the same factory over there in China. That's right on there and that's where all your equipment and stuff goes in there. Here this area where the landing gear fits in there. Um, this is set up so you can actually um, remove the landing gear when you're um, doing belly yeah, and uh, the nose gear fits right in there and you can take a allen wrench and you could take that thing off there if you want. What I didn't like too much was this uh, nose cone. It's this real flimsy type of plastic, the kind of stuff you find on GWS planes. Um, the other F4 that I got through um, Hobby Lobby, I think this one is made by Starmax. That one, the nose cone is real stiff on it so I think it would it would hold up better in a crash. Here's the uh, ducted fan unit that comes with it. You just get your standard impeller and then uh, housing. So all this is pretty standard stuff. The um, hub adapter, prop adapter, whatever you call this thing. This is aluminum and it uses that uh, compression type uh, so collet. This stuff looks pretty standard for all the other uh, ducted foam. But again, the thing I like about this is that, well, first of all, they're short and uh, the front nose gear has actually got a spring on it. area where you put your electronics. Pull this off. That's all held on there with those um, rare earth magnets. So that's the area right there that all your electronics are going to go in. Basically it's just molded into the foam and I think your battery is just going to fit right in there. This is going to be a force. Okay, the included glue are two tubes labeled A and B, which are, I assumed was epoxy. And I opened them up and smelled them, and sure enough. But if you look at the um, instructions, it just shows the guy rubbing a tube of glue onto the wing. And so it's a little misleading. So if, if you didn't know about epoxy and having to mix the two halves together, and you just did that, you'd end up with a big gooey airplane. And now it's time to glue the wing in place. And you can see the surface that you'll be gluing on has also been painted over. So what I would recommend doing is take a little bit of... Uh, 400 grit sandpaper, you know, and sand off these surfaces that are going to uh, come in contact with each other so that the glue uh, adheres a little bit better. Okay, now the uh, wings have been glued on, all the control surfaces are attached, and now it's time to uh, drop in the ducted fan unit. This is the, actually the 70 millimeter unit from my last jet. Okay, the included ducted fan unit has a hole in it where you can route the wires from the motor. And as you uh, drop in the unit, then you feed the wires from the motor up through that hole right there. And then you can attach your speed controller, which in this case I've cut a little bit of the foam away to allow the heat sink to drop down in to the um, air chamber there so it gets adequate cooling. 
Now after you're satisfied with the placement of the ductive fan unit, then you take the cover and we'll drop that in there. And everything should fit in there just right. And once we have that screw in that little plastic square rectangle, I drop that in there. Finally you got these uh, plugs that just fill up the fill up the hole. Okay, I've installed the speed controller and to hold it down what I've done is cut a couple of notches here and here in the foam and then cut a piece of balsa that was just a little longer than the width of this uh, space here and then kind of snapped it in there and that'll hold that speed controller in place and then the heat sink is exposed to the um, airway. You can see here this one's red and the other one is black and the reason for that is, is those servos turn in opposite directions and the reason for that is is the uh, control surfaces both have to move the same way but the servos are oriented in such a way so that one would go up and one would go down unless of course you plug them into separate channels in your receiver and mix them in the radio and you would need two extension cables that would run all the way up the length of the fuselage up to this. What I've done instead is I've got a, uh, a Y cable that's uh, connected right there and then those are the two leads that go back to the servos and so one they both end up uh, moving the control surfaces in the same direction and that's accomplished without having to uh, run two cables all the way up. Now if you don't have a servo that one is runs one way and one runs the other way, uh, your options are to do what I just said or you can get one of these um, devices here that allows you to reverse one of the servos. It's more or less a Y cable with a switch and then that switch allows you to reverse one of the Here's the, uh, the uh, receiver placement up here in the front and this particular receiver has the, uh, the satellite and then there's a BEC that's tucked down in there and then there's the uh, force cell. Now the last thing that's a bit of a quandary and if this is not described anywhere in the instructions is how the heck am I going to hook up that linkage with that arm there that controls the steering wheel or the, you know, the front wheel. Uh, and then this servo of course plugs into your rudder channel on your radio and the problem I have is no linkage was included and there are no instructions describing how this works so I'm just going to have to jimmy something. Okay, here's the solution I've come up with. It's a uh, rudimentary linkage. It's basically um, just a little linkage wire that's hooked into a extra piece that I had lying around and then I've used a uh, wheel collar to uh, secure it so that it doesn't come off the end. And this is how it operates. Okay, here's the landing gear installed and one last thing that I would recommend is pulling these out and putting some of that epoxy on there and putting them back in because they were loose enough that I could just pull them out with my hand and if you had a even a normal landing that thing would have pulled right out Another of there. Tip, uh, I'm noticing here that uh, you can see some movement uh, when you flex these control surfaces here uh, right where that uh, control arm connects to the uh, elevator um, it's rather loose even though the screws are tight so what I'm going to end up doing is pulling the screws out of there putting a drop of glue in there and then putting them back together because that's going to fail in the air and then this thing will come down like a corkscrew. So, a couple little tips like that will probably save you a crash. Is that alright? Holy. Holy man.